You're tuned in to Death Metal Chronicles. Today is April the 24th. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I found myself some awesome whiskey. The brand is Pine something? Pine Creek. It's a vintage whiskey my buddy has. So uh, yeah, it's about 10 in the morning. So what a... Uh, a better way to wake up and get some uh, some whiskey in your your life. Ooh, that's smooth. Mm mm mm. I don't want to know how much this costs. This is gonna be really good. <sighs> so I ended up deployed for a an entire week after being disabled. Uh, me being an idiot cutting my own hand a couple of months back I was on disability for eight freaking months after being a dirty contractor and uh, so I ended up uh, going on a counter ID contract all of one week amazing and uh, turns out they uh, didn't need my position anymore so Ended up screwing me over and uh, sending me back to the states. So now I'm back to square one, being a dirty contractor. You know, if you're you're a soldier, most people don't know, but what ends up happening is some guy gives you some sort of command hand. You end up having to like go mow some guy's lawn or you know do trash. If you're a dirty contractor, you don't get to go to no general's house and go clean clean up after him and his kids or. Go pick his wipe up from the spa or anything like that. Your ass is just done. If you have to win, so you get a next job. So, contracting, there is no love. If you think you're going to be an awesome contractor and make all this kind of money, you're, you're wrong. Because it's probably better just to be a soldier. Money is all short term, it is definitely not long term at all. So, I ended up uh, meeting a bunch of different gentlemen um, that were working for different contractor companies while I was out. And uh, the interesting thing that I found was that there's a lot more people coming back from Afghanistan than there are people um, going forth. I didn't really realize um, how many people were coming back. Um, I think the rate is at least 500 people a day are coming back um, from Afghanistan and per week there's probably only maybe a hundred people um, redeploying or going on another de deployment um, so if you're thinking that you're gonna end up going uh, going to get some awesome work and and uh, by the end of the year uh, you better get on the move and, and go as soon as you can because I tell you what, I highly doubt that any, uh, any of these companies are going to be deploying people um, past September. Um, the visa situation is going to come to a head. And just like when I was in Iraq, basically what ended up happening is all these companies got as many people as they possibly could over um, before December and then fucking left them there, whether or not they had a contract or not. And what ended up happening is all the guys that stayed there um, they made a shit ton of money. Those dudes were up to a thousand, uh, fifteen hundred dollars a day for some of these jobs, um, who stayed in Iraq, um, and ended up working for some really good companies. Now, the people who didn't stay, all of the people that got uh, evacuated or um, either got fired while they were in country or whatever, um, you know, those people were never allowed to go back again because they didn't have a visa. Um, although, if you've got a visa, then you're straight. Um, you'd be able to work for a long time, um, and the money's probably going to go the same way as uh, as Iraq did, where it was you know fifteen hundred a day, um, as opposed to the hundred dollars a day for some of these contracts that I've seen um, in Afghanistan. Right now, the money is so bottomed out that even a senior dude on some of these programs are only making you know a hundred grand with no medical benefits, no housing allowance, fucking nothing. So. Uh, I would rethink your contractor idea if you're uh, if you're trying to do an awesome contracting job because it isn't going to get good. It's only going to get you know get worse. 
Um, and, and that you know that all changes with the government. So I mean, like if, the, if there was a job, say with the State Department, you know, a State Department job is going to last. But anything that's not associated with uh, State Department or Special Forces, you're screwed. I mean, you're just going to get fired or um, you're going to have to stay in country and then hope you can find another job. That's really the only way that you're going to be able to, uh, to keep working, really, um, is finding something that's associated with the State Department or Special Forces along those lines. Because, you know, all those people get to stay um, and they get visas for all their guys and stuff like that. But um, on a regular contract, yeah, no, that... This shit ain't gonna last. I'm telling you what. I found it interesting while I was deployed too that I met a bunch of people who were like, oh, hey, bro, can you help me find a phone that's unlocked or whatever and all this jazz. And I thought it was really interesting because it was like most of these, they, they all like, oh, sweet, you got a like, really cool phone. I've got a Motorola Atrix HD, uh, has HDMI output and, um, it was locked originally to AT and T, and I unlocked it for like thirty bucks, whatever. But it's a hundred and about a hundred and fifteen dollar phone right now. Um, you can get it on Amazon or whatever. Um, I think it's a four point nine inch display. I can't even freaking remember anymore. Um, I've been using this phone for the past six months or so. Um, I'm a big fan. It's, you know, it's on the cheaper side of things. Um, it's kind of like the Motorola Razor or the, um, there was another one. It was the original Motorola Atrix. Yeah, right now it's going for about $189. Um, that's kind of like the average. Um, and it's got GSM, so you can use it on AT&T or any of the, the Afghan cell phone networks. Um... So, okay, it's 5.26 inches tall by 2.75 inches wide uh, with a 4.5 inch uh, screen and uh, 720 uh, resolution. Um, it has like a color boost to it, so it's, it, it almost gets to the same uh, rate as at 1080p, but it's not exactly up to that. Um, I really like the feature of the whole HDMI output because then if you get like a, you buy some TV or something like that while you're deployed or you're just traveling, whatever, then you just like hook up, you know, your HDMI output to whatever screen and now you can watch, you know, your own personal stuff off of it. Um, I've really been impressed with it so far. Um, what I ended up doing is I ended up getting a Cyanogen mod. Uh, it's a clean ROM, basically, it's stock Android. And it gives you the ability to um, use um, privacy block, which basically, in the provisions of the phone, each application has permissions. And with this, um, basically, I'm, I'm not sure if it's an actual application, because it's technically at the level of the phone itself. Um, so what Privacy Guard will allow you to do is like not allow Facebook to um, get into your phone contacts, or not allow even the, the even if you wanted to block the the dialer, say that you're in an area and you know that somebody's going to be trying to jack with your phone, you you know put that on the dialer and then the dialer can't even access anything at all, um, and that's at the root permissions of the phone. Um, so it's really cool and, and it can help you out a lot. It's like it'll go on networks where I'm not really comfortable with Wi-Fi, knowing my location. Um, Anything like that, and sometimes the networks won't allow you to use Tor. It um, it'll notice that you're using it and will you know push you off of their uh, reassign IP address, keep reassigning, 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 um, because it knows you're using Tor. And um, so this is just another way to obfuscate your your traffic of your phone, um, so that you're not going to get um, any of your personal data transferred over to someone else's network. Um, and it'll really help you. Um, and if you're not willing to flash a phone and put on Cyanogen Mod, um, I just looked Cyanogen Mod. It's C Y A N O G E N Mod M O D. And you go on uh, on eBay. You can get yourself um, unlocked HTC Inspire um, 4.4.2 4 rooted uh, Cyanogen Mod KitKat for 92 bucks. Um, you can find all these phones. Someone already already unlocked it. They've already put Cyanogen Mod on there. Um, 
and you can go all the way up to like a super 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 nice phone which is um the oppo is it the n1 which one is it the the oppo phones come with cyanogen mod on them originally um and cyanogen mod worked with oppo to be able to put out a phone um and it's around like five or six hundred dollars though um, but it's an unlocked phone. I mean, if that's something that you're looking for, um, yeah. Okay. So the Oppo Find 5 is a quad core 1.5 gigahertz with two gigabytes of RAM and 13 megapixel, um, phone for 369. Um, and it's a five point, uh, the Oppo X, a 909 Find 5 is a 1080p screen, 5.5, um, 5 inch screen with a 1.5 gigahertz quad core. Um, I think it's a Snapdragon. It should actually have a Snapdragon processor in it. Um, but if you're looking for like an awesome, like awesomely ridiculous phone that you'll be able to use for a really, really long time, that phone will last you for the next at least three or four years. Um, and it'll basically pay for itself. Um, and you can get these phones on, uh, on eBay. I mean, you don't really have to flash a phone if you don't want to. Um, it's a really complex thing to do sometimes. Some phones just really will not allow you to flash them. Um, or you'll get bugs in the ROM and then it's just not going to do what you want. And you're just going to get angry and <laughs> your life will be horrible. Um, I remember I had put a diff I put a ROM on this Motorola Atrix, and uh, it was a Pac-Man ROM. I love Pac-Man. They're a fantastic team of developers that make custom ROMs for your phone. And I ended up using it for about like two weeks, and I ended up finding out that it wouldn't allow me to use um, Google Voice. I use Google Voice for all of my phone calls, and basically I just so while I'm deployed, I'm able to text over the internet. Um, as well, if I hooked it up to Voice over IP, I'm able to make um, Voice over IP calls over it, and I keep my number. So no matter what phone I have, I just always give out my Google Voice number, and I can block people. I can add people to my contacts list. Um, it gives me a running list of all my phone calls, all my text messages, all my voicemails. I can listen to my voicemails over the internet. So there's never a time where I'm losing a phone call or anything like that. Um, and most people don't have my regular phone number, so it really it solves the problem of you know, even if you you lose your phone, you can go online and you can get all your you can get all your phone calls, you can get all your stuff. Um, so you don't really need to be tied to a physical phone. The phone is just the 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 handset in which you're able to mobily use voice calls, but it's not what you need to make the calls really. Um, calling these days, you can do voice over IP and be able to use Google Voice. Through you can find even a tablet that doesn't even have a phone with it at all, and be able to log into um, Google Voice through whatever Voice over IP application and make your phone calls from that. Um, so it really separates the calling aspect from the device because that the device is is how you're calling is is the medium for calling. It's not necessarily what you actually have to have for it. Um, it just kind of gets you to that place. Yeah, I really suggest anybody, if you're looking for a really, really good phone, um, just search Cyanogen Mod, and you can find a pretty badass phone um, for fairly cheap. I mean, you don't really need to spend, you know, five, six hundred dollars on some, some phone. Um, I mean, even look at these Nexus 4s. The Nexus 4s are only going for a hundred dollars. They're completely good, adequate phones. It's an older device, but people are reviving them and putting Cyanogen Mod on it. Yeah, it's got a 1.5 gigahertz processor with a... Should be... I can't remember how many gigs of RAM. Uh, it has a 4.7 inch display with Gorilla Glass. Sounds pretty decent to me. I mean, a bunch of people bought uh, LG... Uh, uh, Nexus 4 is a couple, you know, only 12 months back, and it was a good phone. So, I mean, you don't really need to be, even like a Haji phone, you don't really need to be using one of those. I mean, like one of those, like, broke-ass IAD phones. I mean, you can buy a, a good phone 
um, for decent money. I mean, hundred dollars or so, and, and you're set. Um, I wouldn't buy a phone for five hundred dollars. I don't see the point. Um, not in my opinion. The only thing I dislike about my Motorola Atrix um, is that the capacity is only a 1700 milliamp battery. Um, for me, I can probably make about two hours worth of calls and it'll drop me down to maybe like 50%. And if I make if I make more than five five or six like long, like hour long phone calls, I'm probably only maybe doing like four hours worth of calling and then I'll have to charge my phone. Uh, there's no other way um, unless I'm tied to um, power the entire time. Something new that I ended up getting was a Easy ACC power bank. And this power bank um, also is a Wi-Fi router. So it has Ethernet plugged into it. Um, it has an Ethernet port. It's got... Um, I forget which one that I have. Go on my orders of Amazon. I got it for $43 on Amazon. Um, it's the Easy ACC Wi-Fi wireless... USB flash drive, SD card reader, portable hotspot. <laughs> um, this thing's pretty freaking amazing. That's forty three ninety nine right now um, on Amazon, and it's a eighty eight hundred milliamp um, battery. It takes a while for it to charge. I it took me about six hours to charge this thing. Um, most people were able to get at least three complete charges of the phone from this power bank. Um, but the beauty of this is that you can connect it to five different devices to uh, to its own Wi-Fi router that's on this power bank. And you could transfer files. So what you could do also is if you're able to use HTML, you could actually edit an HTML document in real time. And as long as you're saving before the person is getting into the file, you'd be able to, everybody would be able to, to edit an HTML file. That's, that's easy to do. I don't know about like other formats. Other formats might be a little bit difficult, but at least HTML or like a R, like RTF or TXT file, you'll be able to edit something like that really, really quick and on the fly, basically like everyone doing it at the same time and editing and doing things, you know, ideas and stuff. Everybody's using the same, a bunch of different five computers, but you're editing it on the actual SD card in real time. Um, what's cool about this is that there's um, applications that you can use and you can stream movies directly from this power bank. So if you're at a friend's house and you've got some you know, USB flash drive and that it doesn't have USB flash drive on this guy's tablet, well, you can just stream the movies over the tablet through the application. Um, and it also uses the web browser, it uses Chrome. I haven't, I haven't used it yet for that purpose. Uh, I'm not really sure if I'll actually do that or not. Um, but for me, I think the beauty of it is being able to carry around enough power to be able to use my devices when I'm on the move. Uh, yesterday, I was driving six hours from uh, D.C. to a friend's house, and I needed power. My my GS When I've ever used GPS with my Motorola Atrix, it just kills my battery in like less than an hour. Um, it just destroys it. And so I hooked up my, uh, my Easy ACC... Uh, power bank and I was able to, to charge my phone while I was driving and it was perfect. Um, I couldn't have asked for anything better and it actually charges really really quick. So the, the power draw, it should be 5 volts to charge it which is a regular USB uh, yeah it's DC 5 volts 1, 1A um, I don't know what the power output is itself um, how much power it allows you to draw um, Look at it. I can't remember. Capacity. Okay, so yeah, so the input is 5 volts and the output is 5 volts. So that's fucking sweet. Um, and what's cool is it actually doesn't come with any cables or anything. At least this version. Um, it uses micro USB to charge itself. And I was fucking impressed with that. That's freaking sweet. Um... 
I mean, USB cables are actually coming becoming hard to find. Like regular USB cables, old school big ones. Um, I think that's USB alpha to, to female or something like that. But I forget there's a name for those the original USB cables. But um, they're definitely not the micro USB cables that pretty much all of our phones have. I mean, it's not really the best connector to have, but it's just what is. And it works, and it's something stable that you can use. Um, but I was really impressed, and I was able to, to plug it up. And it took a while for it to charge, the actual power bank. But, I mean, you know, it's an 8800 milliamp battery. I mean, come on. You can't just charge that, you know, super quick. It's going to take time to, to charge it. But with the ability of being able to make your own Wi-Fi router as well, um, you know, you're traveling somewhere, and um, all they have is hardwire. You just plug that up, make your own Wi-Fi router, and you're set. And now all your devices can can plug up to this and have uh, internet. Um, it makes a big deal if you really want to be able to have um, decent internet. Now, if you're deployed though, um, and you're on um, like Sniper Hill or Magic Island or um, HughesNet or any of the, any of those companies uh, that provide internet for the military, um, they actually have people that go around and sniff packets and make sure that nobody else is using a router, and they can actually turn off your router um, remotely. So you don't want to use that deployed unless you're allowed to. Um, trust me, they will shut you down. Um, I met the guy who does it, and he, all he has to do is just go around around your chew, and uh, he sniffs your, and he can sniff your packets too. So if you're, you know, on uh, some sexy, sexy chat with your, your lady friend, uh, he can look at that. So I would not do that. I would, uh, that's the reason why they use hard lines. So nobody can, uh, sniff your packets, especially some foreign national and, uh, score all your banking data and then steal all your money that you earned. So, uh, yeah, I would not do that. Um, but this thing's pretty sweet. I've been really impressed so far with it. Um, it's the easy ACC power bank and I can get it for 43 bucks and it's on Amazon prime. Um, and they use LaserShip as well, so that was kind of cool. LaserShip is a third-party um, shipment people. I'm not sure if they have their own air assets or not, um, but I know they have vehicles and stuff. So as soon as a shipment comes in, uh, 06 or 0700, they're already out there um, bringing stuff to people's houses for Amazon. Um, that's the best shipment stuff I've ever had. It literally came from, I think it was some Tennessee or some shit like that, it flew overnight. It was like eight or twelve hours away from my location. Laser ship got it. Basically, 20, 23 hours or less, this easy ACC thing was in my hand. So I, I'm fairly impressed with Amazon um, hooking it up. I mean, psh, they don't fucking pay me for this. And uh, so yeah, you can get one of those. I would get one for a deployment. Get two of them. You know, give one to your friend. Now it's time for Military Times Roulette. <laughs> when in doubt, just go to the Military Times. <laughs> Discharge Marine regrets crucifying himself in public. It's <laughs> so good. You know, just when you think you've seen everything that you could possibly see with the, you know, military times, they just, they're at it again. <laughs> I'm fairly certain sometimes that the Duffel blog is actually reporting real news, and the military times is just making up their fucking articles. <laughs> it's the most retarded shit sometimes. Like, where do they find this? Like, why? Why is it even in the news? Like, who who said that it was okay for the someone to report this one random marine on a fucking cross? Joshua Kohler felt that no one was paying attention to the claims of injustice, so former marine sergeant donned his old dress blues Sunday and hung himself on a ten foot cross across the state capitol building in Denver, Colorado, where six thousand Coloradoans were celebrating four twenty, the unofficial holiday for marijuana users. 
While serving as a Marine recruiter in Boulder, Colorado, Collar said that he struggled to make recruiting goals. Despite working 14 to 16 hours a day, he refused to fraud enlistees into the Corps by ignoring factors that would disqualify them from service, he said, and ultimately said that he could not do what is required of him in the region, with his superiors interpreted as quitting. When he went to trial, he said, he was not allowed to testify in his own defense, and he quickly found guilty and harshly punished. Kohler admitted that he hid information about himself in order to join the Marine Corps. He enlisted He enlisted despite having been expelled from school, having physical problems, including asthma and criminal record. According to reports from the time, Kohler was discharged by Denver police in 2005 with setting a cat on fire and throwing it off of a roof. He was 18 at the time. Kohler, who was demoted to private, sentenced to a month in, in the brig and just discharged from the Marine Corps last year after being convicted at a special court martial of insubordinate conduct, disobeying a superior officer, and failure to obey an order. Said he believes he was railroaded out of the Corps and his crucifixion stunt was the only way to bring attention to his case. God. Once a photo of his demonstration began to circulate around Facebook, Kohler quickly began to receive the attention he sought little he sought little of it positive. Wow, this is great. This is amazing. Just get ready for it. Dude was butt hurt over being a cult marshal, one commander wrote when the photo appeared on the off color marine humor page, just the tip of the spear. <laughs> I've never heard of this. This sounds great. <laughs> Just wanted a shock value so people would pay attention to his whining. <laughs> that sounds like a Marine right there. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> Just the tip of the spear. <laughs> Get promoted, they said. You'll have a great time, they said. Cigarettes, Staff Sergeant Smart Pack, <laughs> Fritos. <laughs> oh God, this is just great. I've, I've actually never seen this before. You guys will have to find this out. Just the tip of the spear. Wow, this is great. A Marine with lightsabers and all this jazz. Oh, wow. My experience is proven. My rank is spouse. <laughs> oh, my God. Maximilian Uriarte created the popular Terminal Lance web comic, also shared the photo on his page. I feel the imagery of Christ and his point, what I've gathered anyway, are two very unrelated things, Uniarte wrote. Even as an art piece, Christ implies martyrdom. He's just using this as shock value. He's not a martyr. He's just the dude that got a court martial and fucked over. <laughs> Maximilian Uriarte, okay. I didn't know that was the name of the guy who started Terminal Lance. Terminal Lance, the white donkey. <laughs> This is stolen valor. A bunch of kids on a little tyke's uh, jeep, whatever. <laughs> so good. Guess what day it is? No, seriously. Guess what day it is? <laughs> oh, this is great. So yeah, um, if you uh, if you're a marine, I guess go on a. Get on a cross and do do marine things with crosses, I guess. Oh god, this is just fucking great. <laughs> Hope you guys will get a laugh out of this one. Welsh, Afghanistan could create meaningful aerospace industry. We really want to. We really want to sell my friend's aerospace stuff from Boeing and Lockheed Martin, everybody. So, oh yeah, it's great," says General of the Air Force. 
Scott Ash guy. Yeah, I'm not going to be getting a job in the next five weeks over at Lockheed. Don't look, look over here, look over here. Don't look here. I'm not going to be making any money. <laughs> Washington. Afghanistan is not a country known for its aeronautical industry, but at least one top-ranking U.S. official believed that it could change. The aviation industry in Afghanistan is an opportunity for that country, General Mark Wells of the Air Force Chief of Staff said Wednesday. It's an industry that could be incredibly successful and meaningful for them in that region, but it hasn't been robust in the past. Their Air Force will lead the effort. Their airmen will lead that effort. But why, I don't understand. Uh, Welsh speaking at a breakfast lecture, <laughs> breakfast lecture, <laughs> that's great, <laughs> by the National Press Club, warned that any industrial development could be endangered by the 2014 withdrawal of U.S. forces. So we must stay. We must help them. The only defense is to stay. <laughs> God, we're fucking living in Soviet Russia, I swear to God. It's so ridiculous. Oh, okay. This is great. So... If we have a chance to train them to the level where they can be fully operational, sustaining the Air Force over time with the ability not just to fly airplanes, which they do very well, but manage infrastructure and systems and logistics trains and those things, I think it helps the country's ability to develop an aviation industry over time, Walsh said. That's why we like to stay engaged. If we come out by the end of the year, clearly the effort will not continue. Okay, so these fuckers had 12 years, okay? I was in middle school when this shit happened 12 years ago. 12 years ago, my ass was, you know, a little pimple-faced, you know, scumfuck uh, in, in middle school. And we went to Afghanistan. And even before that, we had people in Afghanistan. And before that, in the 60s, I had a, like, SF buddy who went there and trained some, like, rebel forces and shit uh, to, like, destabilize whatever fucking government was there. Okay? So we had 20-something years of this bullshit. So, Mr. where was Mr. Walsh at? He's a general. Why didn't 12 years ago this dude train a bunch of Afghans to be able to, uh, you know, get shit done or something like that? Sorry I'm cooking. Uh, I'm, I'm not even gonna stop this. It's just gonna be the whole thing. Y'all just gonna have to like, you know, imagine what chicken smells like, uh, you know, while I'm cooking. But I mean, really, come on. So this dude was a general, right? I mean, he had to have been some sort of rank twelve years ago. Do you all like change and bring hope and fucking democracy and women's rights and shit to fucking Afghanistan? Help them fly fucking planes and shit, and get more Air Force hotties. Did jobs or something, I don't know. Um, what the fuck, man? I mean, come on. 12 years? Really? That's yeah, just bullshit. I don't even want to read the rest of this. It just makes me angry. I'll read the end of it. Air Force officials have said more cuts to platforms will be needed to sequestration levels return in 2016, given an opportunity to strike an optimistic note on a potential deal. Walsh remained list, uh, realistic. I am not seeing with any indication that Congress will act to avoid sequester levels while shed. And that was the end of it. And no comments. Yep. I tell you what. These motherfuckers are in bed to make money. As all these dudes are in the game for. I'm not saying you shouldn't make money. I mean, hell, if we live, you know, in, a, in an interestingly different society... Uh, you know, a lot of people would make billions of dollars. It'd be kind of cool, you know, because, like, oh, these are our enemies. We have to fight them. They're bad. And then, you know, you kill a bunch of people. You come back. You fuck bitches, get money. You know, do your thing. Uh, operators fuck level 10 or something like that, you know, and, and do your shit. You know, and you'd make a bunch of money because you're like, oh, we saved the population. Everybody's free. Everybody's great. We killed all those bad people over there. And then, you know, it'd be great. But, you know, you have this dude, Welsh, you know, who's just like, hey, status quo, we have to stay, the Air Force can't possibly leave Afghanistan, I mean, come on, we have to train them, it's been 12 years, we need more time, like, nah, dude, like, <sighs> these people are something else, I'll tell you what, and they don't represent any of us, dude, don't, don't represent me, I'll tell you that, definitely not that Indonesian guy either, ain't my damn president. Daggone whales living off the government.
Taking out jobs. Duffel blog. Pentagon considers ban on CrossFit workout program. <laughs> the Defense Department is considering a proposal to ban the CrossFit con to ban the controversial CrossFit workout program for all military members, citing the lack of full evaluation of the exercise plan and an approved program doctrine. The Duffel blog has learned the exercise program, a mixture of resistance, calisthenics, and aerobic exercises, which stresses variation and repetition, has become wildly popular over the last decade, as many troops have become vigorous practitioners of the CrossFit lifestyle. And there's a link to it. Where does this go to? This has got to be good. PT leader discover, discovers CrossFit. Sailors less than thrilled. <laughs> An internal memo leaked to reporters, the Pentagon outlines how it would stop military members from doing CrossFit, even in their private time. Service members who own CrossFit-specific equipment must turn it in and receive a receipt at their m major unit supply activities within 30 days of receipt of this action, the memo reads. Service members will, with membership in private CrossFit gyms will cancel their membership and receive written cancellation notice when they will turn it in a major unit administration activities for collection and verification within 15 days of this action. The memo may also mandates that military law enforcement patrol private CrossFit gyms, which will be added to each installation's off-limits establishments list <laughs> to catch any non-compliant service members. If approved, the plan is sure to raise objections with some devotees within the ranks, as well as owners of the private gyms who will lose revenue. But many senior leaders are applauding the change, with many noting that troops have followed the same physical training plan for decades, push-ups, sit-ups, and a five-mile run, and that worked out just fine. <laughs> it was getting kind of ridiculous, said Command Sergeant Major Francis... Francis Burns, senior enlisted leader of the U.S. Army Europe, as vicious brown tobacco spit congealed in his stubble, suddenly there's a new PT plan, which has been vetted by the Pentagon. Thank God the chief finally put a stop to it. After all, if we had let our troops split off on their own and not follow guidance from higher, we may not have been so victorious in Iraq and Afghanistan over the last decade. <laughs> Further plans to curtail unauthorized physical training include prohibition of the P90X and insanity programs and adventure races such as the Spartan Run and Tough Mudder events. <laughs> First... <laughs> First rule of CrossFit is never stop talking about CrossFit, <laughs> says Jeremiah White. Josh Noble, can they just ban shaker bottles? This is the new international sign of douchebaggery. Every time I see one, I just know I'm going to hear someone's routine. <laughs> Colleen Murph hates people who own bottles that make it easy to mix their own supplements up with, but yet is a grown-ass man who watches MLP? I don't know what that is. Want me to avoid CrossFit? Just slap tap-out logos onto it and see how quickly I'll disappear. <laughs> CrossFit gave me guns, flexes, and you have to take my guns when you rip them from my cold, dead arms, says MP Gordon. <laughs> Tony Kim says, CrossFit also supports our military. Where did hero 
WODs come from. Your sport honors the heroes that sacrifice their lives in these stupid wars, says E4 Corporal in the United States Marine Corps, according to his uh, Facebook. And his handle is Anthony M. Anthony Ming Kim. If you'd like to go on his. Uh, on his Facebook and uh, tell him that he's wrong or right, whichever that you believe, according to your convictions. Ah, here he goes. Finally, they got some contractor shit up in here. Thank you, Duffel Blog, representing us contractors. Contractor designs Air Force jet Chinese missile to shoot it down. <laughs> Congress has promised to hold hearings after Department of Defense watchdog turned up evidence that contractor manufacturing the Air Force planned F-24 Boyd fighter jet has been being contracted by the Chinese military to design a missile to shoot it down. <laughs> We're going to get to the bottom of this, declared a visibly angry Senator Mark Kirk, Republican of Illinois, in a session in the Senate Armed uh, Services Committee. The senator made his remarks after after a report by the Pentagon Inspector General revealed that the Virginia-based Pattaya Man or Patriotic Airfa Aircraft Manufacturing Corporation, <laughs> which received the bid to develop and build the F-24 in 2002, was also simultaneously developing China's PL-13 <laughs> service-to-air missile <laughs> to shoot down the F-24. <laughs> But Tamman was denied any conflict of interest and claimed the whole affair is simple misunderstanding. <laughs> we are taking these allegations extremely seriously, wrote spokesman Don Min. Dong Min. <laughs> In response to media inquiries, he defended Tamman's con con connections with the Chinese military and synergistic opportunity of vertical integration to help the company expand its 21st century global marketing footprint and time for the of domestic austerity. Min also described the PL-13 as purely defensive in nature and said it was designed only for sale to the U.S. and NATO member states. However, the company website, All in Mandarin, <laughs> describes the missile as perfect for helping you maintain air superiority or of a large or small offshore Pacific islands you may have claimed. <laughs> According to Min, internal barriers between different subsidiaries of the company set up to prevent any conflicts of interest may have accidentally contributed to the problem. <laughs> he included a picture from the company headquarters which showed a state-of-art piece of cardboard separating the cubicles. <laughs> For the all-weather air superiority fighter and people's heroic air defense development teams. <laughs> I can't read the rest of this. <laughs> ah, this is great. President Obama visits Afghanistan, shoots three Taliban fighters. Bob Salerno, today, the American people are recovering from the shocking news that President Barack Obama came under enemy fire earlier this week in Afghanistan. While visiting with soldiers and key leaders, where the president came under attack from insurgents, cutting him off from deli delivering his speech. We must finish the job we started in Afghanistan and end the war responsibly, he said to a crowd of soldiers at Fob Salerno near the city of Coast. At the moment, the base began taking mortar fire from the group of insurgents firing from some nearby hills. As Obama's Secret Service detail threw him on the ground for protection, Specialist Hector Peterson ran over and handed him an M9 pistol, saying, Here you go, sir. You'll need this. Obama then ran to the ECP with a quick reaction force before anyone could stop him, covering four kilometers between Fob Salerno and the insurgent position <laughs> in just 15 minutes. Obama and his men came under heavy fire from enemy machine gun team pointed positioned to ambush them. Obama then rallied the small squad of soldiers and encouraged them to fight by yelling, Let's give our mothers something to cry about! He just opened up on them until his magazine was empty, said Corporal Cyril Abrams. Then calmly reloaded and kept firing, 
When I tried to take cover, he grabbed me at the helmet and said, What are you trying to live forever? And dragged me back in the assault. <laughs> Reaching the enemy mortar position, Obama killed two insurgents and then turned to face the third, who dropped his weapon and was raising his hands. I don't speak your wabba dabba do, Obama shouted as he coldly shot him in the face. <laughs> At one point, his pistol jammed. Obama surprised the troops by grabbing an AK-47 off the bodies and continued putting rounds down range. <laughs> Guys, I spent part of my childhood in Indonesia, he said while effortlessly conducting immediate action on his weapon. <laughs> it's just like riding a bicycle. <laughs> After killing the three Taliban, Obama then posed for a group photo with the photos uh, with the soldiers while urinating on the corpses. Go ahead, he said with a smile. Try and bust me down. <laughs> Obama, recently described as America's warrior in chief, is not the first executive to have engaged in direct combat. His predecessor, George W., is widely remembered for flying close air support missions during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. <laughs> and Lyndon Johnson was awarded the Silver Star for carrying out a bombing raid over Hanoi during the Vietnam War. However, the most famous example is Ronald Reagan, who led a team of special forces to rescue 52 American hostages in Iran within the first hours of his presidency. Obama campaign spokesman David Axelrod said the president re-election team are already planning to release a political ad capitalizing on the trip. The ad entitled, Badass Motherfucker, <laughs> says Mitt Romney would have hesitated before drilling someone in the eyes, but not President Obama. This November, vote for the man who shoots first and doesn't ask questions later. <laughs> Obama has already announced his plan to conduct a future listening tour across the Al-Qaeda-dominated northern Pakistan. So I can listen to your screams, bitches. <laughs> Vic Sandyball says, Merka, coming to save the motherfucking day. Anyone hear about the GOP post-election plan to recall the sec def? Check Hegel to active duty as a, as, as staff sergeant? And send him to Anoch, <laughs> Robert Walton says. Fort Hood's second shooting was not a terrorist attack. Fort Hood is a community of 80,000 people. How many other 80,000 communities have a lower crime rate? James Cadow. Stephen McRae says, If only the shit really happened. It's the duffel blog, guys. None of this shit is real, but it's a good laugh, though. Santos Corset Cortez says, Go ahead and wipe your mouth. There, Jihad, you still got some. Michael Roach says, America. Christopher Gill says, and followed through the welfare checks and food stamps after apologizing. Dot, 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 dot. <laughs> oh, wow. So, yeah, um... This has been Death Metal Chronicles, um, episode for Thursday, April the 24th. I've got a little bit of whiskey in the system, and uh, I hope that you guys, if you want to become a super duper contractor extraordinaire, uh, yeah, I would not, and I would just stay soldier or marine or anything but a contractor. You lose your jobs. Unless you're Obama and you need to go sh shoot three Taliban fighters. Then you could probably get the jobs. So uh, this has been Death Metal Chronicles. Hope you guys have a great afternoon. And uh, yeah, keep it uh, keep it cheesy.